Hi everybody, this is God Sad for the Sad Truth. Today I'd like to discuss a misconception regarding evolutionary psychology, namely the idea that evolutionary psychologists uh, mainly focus on identifying human universals, things that are the same across cultures, while neglecting cross-cultural differences. And that's simply not true. Uh, yes, there is a shared human nature, in which case it would make sense to look for human universals, but also it would make sense to study why different cultural traditions would evolve to be of that form. And in that case, an evolutionary perspective uh, would certainly be valuable. And this is precisely what behavioral ecologists study, basically the idea that uh, we are endowed with the capacity for behavioral plasticity. In other words, the capacity to be adaptive is itself an adaptation. And so to make that point, I often have referred to a, uh, a term which I love, Darwinian gastronomy, basically studying culinary traditions from an evolutionary perspective. So if you think of culinary traditions or, or cuisines from different uh, countries, you could think of endless cross-cultural differences. Uh, this culture uh, eats cheese while this one doesn't, this culture uh, eats more rice than this other culture. So there's endless number of ways by which you could uh, identify and revel in cross-cultural differences. And this is very much what cultural anthropologists do or what cultural psychologists do. Evolutionary psychologists take this uh, exploration one step further. They basically explore why these cultural uh, traditions would have evolved to be of that form. Um, and so in the case of culinary traditions, so if you look at uh, the slide that just uh, came up next to my head, uh, the, whether a culinary tradition has more meat-based dishes or vegetable-based dishes, how much spices it uses, how much pickling uh, is, is, is uh, applied within that particular culinary tradition, uh, how much salt is consumed, all of these uh, forms of uh, culinary traditions uh, turn out to be linked to a very important biological problem, namely uh, it serves to mitigate the dangers of being exposed to foodborne pathogens. And this is known as the antimicrobial hypothesis. So spices, pickling, uh, smoking in some cases, uh, all serve to reduce uh, the pathogen uh, load and so these culinary traditions don't simply evolve mysteriously uh, out of the blue. Rather, they are cultural solutions to very real biological problems. So again, this demonstrates that this idea that you know, something is due to culture or to biology is really a false dichotomy. In many cases, uh, you know, nurture exists in its form because of nature. Uh, I believe that Matt Ridley had a very nice book a few years ago called Nurture by Nature. And this is precisely the idea. So yes, culinary traditions are different, uh, but in many cases they're different because of clear evolutionary reasons. So my point in for today's clip is to demonstrate that uh, while it is certainly the case that evolutionary psychologists care about human universals, they also very much care about uh, culture and the genesis of cultural differences. Hope you've enjoyed this clip. Come back soon. Please subscribe and spread the word. Cheers.